Before we get to Terminello's take tonight, at Lou Terminello is going to rejoin me, talk sports and whatnot. I want to let you know that my ballot today was a mixed ballot, and you can find out why at AlexGNYC1. AlexGNYC1. It's about sports tonight, though. I, I want to take our mind off it for just a moment because, look, there's a lot of other stuff going on as well. However, today was a mixed ballot. I did lead off with Zeldin at the top, not going to lie. But. But other than that, it was a mixed ballot for me, and maybe it was for you too. Maybe you find a balance of power is just voting the best candidates either party. But I digress. This time is for Terminello's take. Lou Terminello, it's time for you once again to join this podcast. It's always a pleasure. Now, Dusty Baker is the oldest manager, I believe, in MLB history to win this uh, World Series. First of all, let's talk about all his Almost. I mean, he almost done it with the Giants, but got outsmarted by the Angels. That 2000 team, 2002 team was ridiculous for the Angels. Then, of course, he was on the manager of the Cubs when Bartman happened. And so he's had a long journey, but it's only fitting this one ends with a ring. I mean, you know, well, maybe I'm being stubborn here. He can, only, he can put the lineup together, but that team just has talent no matter who we threw in there, right? That was part of this whole thing. Well, again, he's, uh, he has uh, had great success as manager. And um, it's good to see, you know, see him win one. I, his happiness at the end of the game and post game was uh, pretty, uh, pretty joyful to to see. Uh, the Astros are a tremendous team, and when you look at what they what they did in uh, this World Series and even through this this run, um, obviously this puts 2017. Behind them, yes, they got caught cheating. I don't know how much of their cheating ended up actually helping them in 2017. They got caught. They got punished. Uh, the, the, the manager, A.J. Finch lost, his, Finch, lost his job. Uh, the general manager lost his job. Hinch has been re- rehired in, the, in one year by, uh, by Detroit. But when you look at what they've done overall as an organization, from point A to Saturday night, the Astros uh, are a tremendous success story. Uh, six straight ALCS, uh, four World Series during that period, two World Series championships. And when you look at, at guys that were on this team, I mean, they lost Carlos Correa, George, uh, George Springer, Garrett Cole, Charlie Morton, and replaced them with guys who weren't even around when the cheating happened, um, with Christian Javier. Jeremy, on that note, Jeremy Pena, wow. Didn't he win the ALCS and World Series MVP? I mean, he did. he's been a star this whole postseason, hasn't he? He, he did. I don't know if he's going to win Rookie of the Year since he's a rookie. I, have, uh, I assume that uh, Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners is going to win the Rookie of the Year. But uh, Jer- Jeremy Pena... Is is just had a tremendous rookie year. Didn't play like a rookie. Didn't play scared. Um, and uh, you know, you, you you put him. You you take guys like Kyle Tucker, who's only 25 years old. Um, he was drafted in the first round, fifth overall. You take guys like Chase McCormick, who made that great catch in Game Five up against the uh, uh, the fence. Uh, I mean, he replaced Springer. Uh, and remember, we keep forgetting a lifetime 298 hitter got hurt at the end of July, had to undergo shoulder surgery. A great professional hitter in Michael Brantley. He wasn't there either, but uh, they won. Uh, they only lost, lost uh, two postseason games, all postseason. They're the best team in baseball. There's n- no, nobody can say Alvarez. anything. Jordan Alvarez has been unbelievable. He's been doing that all season for the Astros, but. I want to go back to something you said that they won legitimately. They won for real. Maybe that was just the biggest issue with the Yankee fans is that they didn't get. They felt they didn't win, you know, naturally that they had a cheat. But this time, seeing that they can win 162 games and then some into the World Series, it's time to put the last five years behind us, isn't it? I think it is. I think it's time that we just stop talking about the garbage situation because they proved themselves now, didn't they? I I, I agree. And and th- throw out the the. Uh 
ridiculous 60-game COVID season of a couple of years ago, the last five full seasons, the Astros have averaged 101 wins. And like I said, they've gone to the ALCS. They've gone, they went to the ALCS even in that, that 60-game COVID season when they were 29-31 and 31 in that 60-game regular season. Yeah, I, don't th- I don't think you, can, you can't knock the Astros anymore. They lost guys. They replaced guys. They don't break the bank on their payroll, uh, and they're still able to, uh, to succeed. And uh, I can tell you one thing. They're not going away. That's for sure. They're going to be favored again next year, one of the favorites for sure. And uh, it was a great accomplishment. Happy for for Dusty, a guy who's a baseball lifer, a guy who's an outstanding manager. Uh, had, you know, as you just said, he had close well, calls remember, with with the Cubs and in other places, and uh, with the Giants. Thing, about Trey Man- yeah, and Trey Mancini. I mean, that guy went from having you know leukemia, I believe, recovering yes. from that. Being tra- what a gold mine for him to be traded at the deadline to the Astros and now can hoist the trophy. I mean, I'm really happy for him, actually. Well, uh, I, I agree. And he made a nice play the other night on uh, that uh, tough ground ball down the first baseline where he was able to smother it and then uh, just was able to use his uh, foot his uh, foot agility to uh, touch the bag. Uh, that was, a, that was a, a play that... Change the you know change that game save that game but the, the Phillies didn't hit in the World Series besides that five home run outburst in the first game in Philly in Game Three Castellanos Real Muto uh, Segura uh, Hoskins they all hit under 160 uh, I think going into Game Six Real Muto had struck out 11 out of 16 times um, you know. The pitching is great for the Astros. They're starting pitching. Their bullpen was impeccable. Ryan Presley did a great job as the closer. Uh, Abreu, uh, their relief pitching was was terrific. Rafael Montero, who oh, wow. actually was in the Mets organization, was actually considered a higher rated prospect uh, when he than Degrom. They brought both of them up at the same time, and they, they, I remember their first major league start was back to back against the Yankees. Uh, and let me, the Grom, they didn't even know if the Grom was going to stay up. That's how. We'll uh, about, sh- go ahead. No, we'll talk about the Grom in a second, but I want to get your thought real fast on the fact that people are now criticizing the managerial decisions from Thompson. Look, he got them to the World Series. It was his leadership that got him there. But my mm-hmm. question to you is. You know, you put in a guy who already gave up a few runs. Why go with Alvarado? I mean, if he was struggling, why put him in that situation as well? I mean, it just backfired on him. I know it did. It, it, lefty, but still. It did. And uh, you're correct. I mean, you can't knock uh, Robbie Thompson. Robbie Thompson totally ignited the Phillies to uh, where they got on Saturday night in tremendous season. But Wheeler, who had been pitching, was pitching great. Uh, I know he's a righty against a big, powerful lefty, but you got to remember, besides Alvarez hitting that home run in the bottom ninth inning in game one of the playoffs against Seattle and then hitting a home run the next day, he was like 5 for 47 the, re- the rest of the postseason until he hit that home run. Uh, I would have, again, I'm no manager. Thompson, questioning Thompson in that situation, I think is not being unfair. Right? That is a legitimate second guess or first guess if you when you were watching it i would have kept wheeler in well wheeler claims you were surprised he was taken out so it's one of those situations For yes sure. I, now, I know he was he, he was surprised so uh we're but again the grom now though because he officially opted right mm-hmm. and your closer is now 105 million dollar closer what mm-hmm. a moment and by the way and by the way he also uh you know, he he's just he's been surprised in five years, I think, and then Degrom opts out. It's like a, a tale of two cities here with the Mets right now. Right. Well, I think I think uh, when you look at, in my opinion, this is just me looking at it from out, outside. Um, I think that the Mets had to sign Diaz, and I know I know uh, that um, relief pitchers get hot and cold and get hot and cold. But if they didn't sign Diaz. Who, who are they going to sign to replace him? The guy was lights out last year. Uh, he's had two lights out um, uh, playoff uh, uh, seasons in his in his career. 
they had to sign him. They had to sign him. So that was a good signing. Um, I also think they have to sign DeGrom. I think that is, I mean, they have to, excuse me, they have to sign DeGrom based on the, on the term. He's going to be 35 years old. If it's, if it's three or four years, which it probably won't be, I probably would sign him. Uh, so, again, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, they're paying ridiculous money for these starting pitchers who only go six innings. All right, well, That's, I feel like there's an exception there because he went, he went far for you guys on a few occasions. But one thing about Scherzer is that his hamstring started bothering him after he signed the contract. I mean, he's the richest arm in New York, and you're right, he's still not going maybe the way they want him to sometimes. Yeah, and I know that's all part of analytics, and once you go over 100 pitches, uh, this happens and that happens, but I don't know. I mean, and DeGrom has had major injuries, so you've got to be very careful with him. I would love to have him back. I guess, he's, I guess uh, he told Mark Canna he wants to be back with the Mets, but the numbers have to work out. In my opinion, I know that I I can't I can't be spending Stephen Cohen's money and he has uh, a lot of money to burn, but um, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a very interesting off season, not only for the Mets, not only for the Yankees, but in in Major League Baseball in, in general. Is Otani going to be traded? What's going to happen there? Um, you're going to have to give up a boatload to get this unique player. Um, Carlos Correa is a free agent. I don't think he's the same player he was before he had those those injuries a couple of years ago, but he's going to get a lot of money also. Uh, Xavier Bogarts is going to get a lot of money, uh, and I don't think the Red Sox are paying it. So uh, he's you know he's a free agent. It's going to be very, it's going to be a very hot hot stove season. That's for sure. I know, and we're only like 140 plus days away from opening day, so I feel like we're right around the corner here. But the hot stove <laughs> that's, industry, that's right. It seems like they've officially he's officially elected for free agency. He being Aaron Judge. Look, if if, um, if the Giants happen to get a hold of him, that would make that that would almost be Gretzky s him going all the way out to the coast, wouldn't it? Um, it's that's that's an interesting way of, put, of putting it. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I still think when the smoke clears that Aaron Judge will be wearing pinstripes and in right field for the New York Yankees. That I'm, well, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with. I'm going to stick with that. Um, on that I note, did, we we do have a few active sports I want to get to real quick because mm-hmm. the offense of the Jets didn't surprise me. I thought they would do well. The defense against Allen was the shocker to me. I mean, two interceptions or maybe even three against your the elite quarterback of the AFC, not just in the division of the league. What is the explanation for that? I mean, Saylor got his guys ready. Well, first of all, do not listen to my predictions because on Wednesday when we were on, I said that the Bills were going to cover the 12 and a, the 12 and a half points. So they didn't do that, and I'm happy about that, obviously. Um, the Jets' defense, and they did a good job through the draft, through free agency, uh, is, very, is very good, is getting better. Uh, last year they were 30 uh, out of 32 teams in putting – pressure on opposing quarterbacks. This year, it, it, they're fifth. And they did sack a very tough quarterback to sack um, in Josh Allen five times yesterday. And uh, the two interceptions that he threw uh, were surprising. I mean, he threw it one, he threw it right to Sauce one time, Gardner. He threw it right to Whitehead. And then Whitehead dropped an interception uh, in the uh, fourth quarter that uh, was right in his hands. So the Jets have been, must have been doing some things, and I am certainly no, uh, no, no NFL scout, but it looked like, looks like they were mixing up their coverage, going from man to zone, back to zone to man. They were, they were mixing it up. And even a great quarterback like Allen, um, when you see so many different looks, it's, it's got to uh, bother you a little bit when you think a, a defensive back is not there, but he is, and ends up getting picked off. Jets did a great job yesterday. Stefan Diggs did not catch a ball in the second half. Gabriel Davis only caught two passes the whole game. But the most amazing thing to me is with four minutes, it was with seven minutes to go on the four-yard line, 
the Jets' makeshift, much maligned offensive line uh, took it from the four uh, to the uh, 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 to, to the Bills' six. That, that's the amazing thing. They only passed once, a 12-yard or two to uh, Mims on third and five from the 20, which was key because it killed, forced the Bills to use their timeouts. Uh, but Carter was great. James Robinson, who just got here, um, had 36 yards, I think, in that in that drive. That was that was it, the eye opener for me uh, yesterday. Uh, the Jets the Jets have a good roster. They have a, they have a good roster. I don't. They have a young roster, so I assume there might be some mistakes made down the road where we don't expect them. But the Jets. The, They've really done a good job of upgrading their roster. The Jet defense is so much I, better than it was opening day against the Ravens. I can't believe Carter shred up the defense though, the way he did. Um, Michael Carter, Me too. I mean, he went from the fourth, as you mentioned, all the way basically down to the five. And, you know, I still say I don't know what play they were trying to do on that third down, but it seemed a bit discombobulated, or do you think the Bills read that before the field goal? No, I think, I think the Bills read that. I do. I, I, I think the Bills read that, and uh, it would have been nice to get the touchdown, obviously. Um, but uh, they held, you know, they, uh, Bryce Huff with the sack, the strip sack, and the Bills did were fortunate to recover the football. Um, and I don't know if Allen is going to show up on the injury report this week because it looked like when Bryce Huff sacked him, with, you know, pushed the football into his palm, which I guess caused some kind of elbow issue later on, but we'll see as, as the week goes on uh, if he's going to play next week against the Vikings, who are 7-1. and one. So, they went to the, the Jets. Jets. Your Jets have added to a Green Bay Packers losing streak. We can't not – to me, the headliners were the Jets and the Lions just because the Lions beat the Packers. They have five straight losses now, and the Jets and Giants were part of that, as were the Bills. So, what's going on in Green Bay? How come they have had this five-game losing streak? Yeah, I mean yesterday, uh, and I saw some. I saw some of the game. Uh, Rogers looked totally out of sorts. Uh, he's only thrown three interceptions in the game, and this is a credit to how his greatness. He's a guy who's been playing forever. Uh, yesterday was only the fifth time he threw three interceptions uh, in a game, um, and he threw a couple of re- really bad ones. Uh, it was the tackle eligible and. And the uh, first-round draft pick, Hutchinson, came from his defensive end position to intercept it. Uh, it, it was not a good day. I mean, he, he hit a player in the head, a defensive player in the head, uh, on a pass Rodgers did. They don't have any playmakers. They don't have any speed. Um, Rodgers, many times, was, and great quarterbacks like him, Peyton Manning, Brady, they can cover up the warts on your team. But this Packer team... Even Rodgers right now can't uh, cover up the warts. And I'm not defending him. He's not having his best year, obviously. Uh, the Vikings are going to coast into a first-place finish in that division. That's for sure. Uh, Which we Packers didn't see because the Vikings struggled Latra. mightily last year. We didn't see that coming because the Vikings struggled heavily last year. Mm-hmm. But um, that's, that's the point. I, I also want to know, you know, Brady getting that win against the Rams. They call it a stunner. Uh, for as a man, that must feel really good because obviously he's been falling in a lot of areas right now off the field. So to finally get a win under his belt, had to feel good, not only as an athlete but as a person. Uh, well, I, I would agree. He probably feels most secure on the football field. Um, that, that that's what he does. Uh, fifth, going 56 yards at the end of the game so with no timeouts against the Ram defense that had just stopped them on the previous possession. Uh, I know he said in post game how good that felt. It was a considering that the Rams went to the Super Bowl last year and uh, uh Tampa is Tampa, that was a boring game for the most part. Uh both teams have huge offensive line problems. Uh, both teams have receiver problems. You know, you know, besides Cooper Cup, uh, you know, the, the Rams really can use Odell Beckham Jr. or somebody else. Um so could so could uh, Brady. Brady misses Gronkowski terribly. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but it looks like I still think when the smoke clears, even with all of the problems that the Bucks have, 
They're in a bad division. By winning yesterday, they're in first place at four and five. They might win a division at nine and eight, maybe ten and seven. Um, and with the Rams, I think they're in more trouble because I still, as I said on Wednesday, I still beware of the 49ers as they put things together. If they get their guys back from injury, um, with McCaffrey, Garoppolo, getting familiar with McCaffrey, be, be, beware of the 49ers. That, I mean, that's not coaching because I feel like the, the, the lighter coach, the, my, the lighter relaxed coaches, like a guy like McDaniel on the Dolphins, Jay was kind of relaxed in the sense they're winning more. Is that is that a thing? Is that like the the recipes to be a little more relaxed and even with the media? I mean, McDaniel comes in and has fun with these guys. So does Stela. That's got to be a change. Well, they, there's that old saying that a team is a personality of his coach. And... Uh, uh, McDaniel might be a, a guy like a guy like that. Uh, they're, they improved their roster tremendously too. Getting Tyreek Hill was phenomenal, uh, and they got Chubb last week and signed Bradley Chubb last week, and they signed him to a five-year uh, extension. And uh, yesterday, watching the game, and I think I, as I mentioned the other day, uh, Tua just throws a perfect pass. He doesn't have a great arm. But for that offense, that dart throwing type passing offense, um, he's perfect. He, he really is. Um, and he has Tyreek Hill and James Wilson Jr., who they also got the trade deadline, caught a touchdown pass yesterday, had a couple huge runs, and uh, you know, a tongue, tongue of Viola is going to be a better quarterback because of guys like that. Miami's making the playoffs. They're going to get oh, better. No doubt. no doubt about that. You know, and the team they played, the Bears, might have a really good future. I mean, this 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 uh, Justin Fields from Ohio State, what a kid. I mean, that kid can do it all. 61-yard touchdown run yesterday. I'd say in the NFC, the Bears are still going to be a contender, if not this year, somewhere along the road here in his tenure. Again, I hate to beat a dead horse, but from the beginning of the year, the first couple of games, where uh, the the Bears were pathetic. They, they they have improved mightily. Uh, you have a kid yesterday. Yeah, I know he only threw for 123 yards or something, but he rushed for 178. He had 301 yards of total offense, um, and they scored 32. That's the bottom line. They scored 32, and they still didn't win. And that wasn't on um, a young, inexperienced court, quarterback like Fields. Uh, they, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, he was spectacular yesterday. He really was. He was spectacular. All right. So where we're at right now, I think, is that the Jets and Giants are in postseason position, which is a first on Marathon Sunday. They haven't been like this in quite a while on the first Sunday in November, and that means something. You know, in baseball, we talk about Memorial Day, but I always say, well, where are they on Marathon Sunday in the NFL, that, right? That's a big – Well, that's, that's very – you know, that's very good, a good way of putting it. Like, he's, that is true. And both teams are uh, in position to to make a run. Um, I think that uh, you know the Jets have a tough. They have a bye this week, then they have to go to New England, which also has a bye. I wish New England was playing next week, but they're not. Um, so uh, uh, the Jets have you know, they, hey, they have winnable games coming up. So there's not besides when they go to Buffalo in December, all their games are. Are, are winnable, and with the Giants, uh, I would say the same thing. Uh, they have, but they do have to play the Eagles twice. Um, I I think the Eagles are are for real, and uh, are they a nine and zero, ten and zero? I don't know how far they're going to go before they lose a game. But uh, Jalen Hurts has totally uh, turned it around. They've added even in midseason, uh, they made a good pass rush even better when they got uh, Robert Quinn from Chicago. Um, it's going to be a very interesting second half of the year in the NFL, especially for New York teams, when we really didn't expect it, especially from the Jets. We didn't expect it. We thought the Giants could win some games because the Giants' schedule going in, and you can never analyze uh, the schedule so far in advance. That's, you know, because so many things can happen. But I thought the Giants were going to win eight, nine games, but they're going to win more than that. I was wrong. And I didn't think the Jets were going to win. The, Jets, the I, I mean, over and under for the Jets was five games, and they've already won six. You look at you look at the upcoming schedule for the Giants, Texans, and Lions. 
I mean, I can't believe I'm saying they could be eight and two after all of that, but they could be. If, if they, they could be, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about marathon real quick. As a sports industry executive, any marathon stories that you have? Because obviously, there's always a special few stories, not just the winners, but everybody crossing that line has a story as to why they're doing it. Right. Well, the the one thing you would never see me do is run a marathon because I can't. <laughs> a half marathon, a quarter marathon. Um, I've had some friends who've run a marathon, uh, and they have they've been pretty successful at where they have had some good, uh, surprisingly t- surprising times. Uh, you know, that's hey, let's face it, the marathon is uh, is a show of endurance. It shows you how tough the human spirit can be and how you can be driven. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it it's it's a reason why it's the last event in the Summer Olympics. It's the signature event. And uh, obviously, Kenyans have excelled at it for years. And they won both yesterday, the men and the women's. And uh, uh, it's truly a, a, a unique event. And I remember when it first started in New York, it just ran around Central Park. They didn't use the five boroughs. Now it's... Four times around, it, I heard, right? Yeah, point? it was it was crazy. Now... Uh, uh, they, they don't have enough uh, ent- open entries to, to handle all the people who try to get in. To try to get in, so it's it's a it's a it's a great event, uh, which also spurred the New York Marathon. Also spurred other marathons around the world and around the country that weren't running marathons before: Chicago, Los Angeles. Uh, I don't. I think the New York Marathon was before even the London Marathon. I could be wrong on that. This, this but the marathon is a great country. show of athletic, mental, and physical excellence. And this Evan Shebet, Kebet, I, I don't know, Shebet, uh actually won in Boston. I think they said on the tele, you know, yesterday that he actually won earlier this year in Boston. So pretty amazing stuff. Hey, that is for, that is amazing win. stuff. Not just because we're gang green and they had a big win, but I'm wearing my green hat because. A blue New York hat will give the wrong idea, and I'm trying to not give that idea. <laughs> I'm wearing my jet hat tomorrow. Okay. Um, on that note, you want to talk about hockey real quick because five-game win streak for the Islanders, which included against the defending Stanley Cup champions, did it not? And so, you know, it gets snapped, but you've got to like what you're seeing a little bit here. I am. I, 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 I actually am. I didn't think they were going to turn it around so quickly. They looked uh, – they really looked dead in the water – before uh, that five-game road trip, and it was a tough road trip. Tampa, Florida, um, then the, uh, the range. They came back to play the Rangers at home, and uh, then you know the Colorado. They played. Uh, they they played a, a tough, and then Carolina. Those are five tough games in a row, and they lost the first two. They beat the Rangers three nothing. They beat the uh, Carolina six two. They were down three nothing to Colorado on that Saturday night. And uh, came back to win. I didn't think that they could do that, and that that showed me something. Uh, then they beat St. Louis, and then they hey they lost they lost to uh, Detroit. I mean Detroit has, looks like they have uh, ready to make the next jump, at least be in contention for one of the playoff spots. The East is very tough, the Eastern Conference. So I'm 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 happy with the Islanders, with the exception of one area which has dogged them even when they got. Uh, within an eyelash of getting to the semi cup, uh, Stanley Cup Finals, their power play is inefficient. It, it, it's been inefficient, and I, they tried stuff to make it better. Um, they got to get that going. You got to score, even though they've been a, they've been a more effective five on five team this year, and they penalty killing teams in the league. They uh, they got to do better on the power play. Their power play is not good. I'll just be kind. Uh, so, I mean, but I think it's going to be a good winter for New York, uh, New York area hockey. The Devils out of nowhere have won nine out of oh, ten. Oh, wow. You know, and I've, and I've said that the Devils have nice young talent. Um, and they do. And as that talent matures, I think you, they have a chance to be in the playoff hunt right to the end. I don't know, and I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Uh, but we'll see uh, as time goes on. I mean, on the... Look, and all of a sudden, oh, and by the way, breaking news, 
there is a minor elbow injury discovered in Josh Allen as you're talking. So there's your breaking oh, news. Okay. You had some insight there. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Look, I'm actually, uh, you know, I want a team down the Canyon of Heroes. If it's the Islanders, well, they might do it in USB area, arena area. But you know what? I, I want someone to win. We we haven't had one in a while. And, of course, to have someone from the New York area in the conference championship three years in a row, I feel like we can push the envelope and make it into the Stanley Cup after all, the fourth year. Well, I, it would be great. I have have slowed down a little bit lately, but they have a terrific roster. They have a great goalie. Um, I think they'll be fine. I mean, I, uh, they're, def- they're definitely going to make the playoffs unless they have a catastrophic injury that they can't make. Well, it'll be a catastrophic injury to, like, Shesterkin. Um, but uh, it should, it's going to be a, a good a, a good all, uh, uh, hockey season, good winter season. I'm looking forward to it. All right. One last topic because I feel like this is the way the Nets are going to ease out of the Kyrie era by giving him six different tasks of uh, – showing he likes, you know, the Jewish people, I would say. Um, these tasks, he's not going to accomplish any of them, are, is he? I mean, I feel like this is their way of kicking him out the door at this point. Well, I, I, that I don't know. I, I don't know that because uh, uh, Kyrie is a unique individual, uh, and, and the Nets do have him under contract when he opted in at the end of last year. Uh, I don't know if he's going to do what they say, what those six stipulations are, and, uh, uh, you know, we'll see. He may, I don't know if he'll ever play for the Nets again. I don't know if he'll ever play a, a, a game in the NBA again. I think he will. Um, but, uh, you know, now the Players Association is involved. C.J. McCollum is the president of the Players Association. Kyrie is a vice president in the Players Association. One of seven, and I was shocked to see that, that he was one of seven vice presidents. Like, who made him a VP? <laughs> That's it. Um, hey, you know, at the same time, everything's crumbling on both sides of the Knicks and the Nets. The winds aren't coming in. It's going to be a long winter for those two teams, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong, but just looking like that. Well, one thing that has, that has gone into – gone into hiding, I should say, for lack of a better term. Uh, last week when all this was coming down, the Kyrie uh, suspension or the Kyrie issue that Imi Udoka was going to be the next coach. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski said it was going to happen within 24 to 20, uh, 48 hours, which would have been last, last Wednesday. Well, here it is the following Monday, and it's like Udoka is not even being mentioned. Um, they have won two in a row. Uh, they have played better defense, and I don't think it's because Kyrie's not there because Kyrie only played uh, 29 games last year, including playoffs, and the uh, Nets' defense was poor <laughs> without Kyrie. Um, I, just, I think the coaching change has made a little bit of a difference. But I have no – and again, like I said to you last week, I have no idea where this is all going to end up. I really don't. Hey, you know, you don't think Shaq's going to get canceled from TNT, do you? Because, of course, he aired that documentary in his own theater that Kyrie was promoting. So that's kind of a weird twist to all of this. I don't know if you caught that or not. Oh, I did not catch that. I, I, again, I, I don't know. I, I don't think – look, it's, if you want to buy this documentary, it's on the Amazon website, I assume, I, I, I heard. Is, is Amazon at fault for selling it? I don't know. I mean uh, – it's really it, it it it's convoluted. It's just too bad all this uh you know this 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 had to happen and uh um, not good. It is amazing how fast this all came in the, about because when you say at least five, that means uh there could be more games in the works here, I think, so we'll have to see how it is out. but Lou, we also got college but it's like you turn your head and boom, college basketball starts this week too, so next week will be a fun little recap of everything. Both Jets and Giants full steam next week. Well, you said the Jets have a bye week. So the Giants will be back next week. St. John, St. Hall just starting out this week. Oh, Lou, we're not. We're just getting started this fall. I don't think we're even. We're just getting here. started. Next you got that right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, and that's Shaheen's first year. So very. Uh, I think a lot of eyes are going to look at St. Hall and see how he does his first year after a long time. Coach Willard is now in Maryland. Yep. 
It's going to be a very interesting college basketball season and a very interesting end of the college football season. Saturday was a very interesting uh, uh, Saturday in college football. Uh, with All right, Notre so well, Dame crushing Clemson. Thank you, as always, and we will have you back next week. We'll see what, what's down the pike. The Union, the Jersey Turnpike, right? So. Uh, absolutely, down the Jersey Turnpike. So always, always good being with you. You have a great week, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next week. And go vote tomorrow. Anyway, I'm Alex Garrett with Lou Terminello. Lou, thanks again. And this has been another episode of Alex Garrett's Sports Spotlight. Actually, go vote today. We have one hour left. Uh, that's why I want to release it before the night was done. One more hour in New York City to make a difference as the cars roll by. Did you drive to the polls yet? Get to them. Hour to go. Thanks again, Lou, for joining. I'm Alex Garrett with this Sports Spotlight on Terminello's Take.